I'm sure most of the fans would want to see Carson versus Nakamura in the Virtus Championship. So, what do you think about your chance in Grand Prix first, then candidates? Okay, so you're, you're talking classical, because I think I mean, there's, yeah. a, there's a very good chance I will play Magnus here, I think, in the Rapid. Um, I mean, almost certainly Blitz as well. I, I think, um, hard to tell. I mean, again, playing this tournament in St. Louis, which was, which was pretty smooth, and playing here where things seem to be going my way as well. Um, you know, I, I think that the fact that I'm not getting tricked into openings or I'm not getting into a lot of trouble shows that even if maybe I haven't worked as hard as other players, I'm still playing at a very high level. And I think, uh, I, I think we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay, I would like to ask you just on the way of uh, the philosophical question, like two years uh, in streaming, you got now one million followers, maybe it changed the life of many people who started to follow chess right now. What do you think about it? How do you feel about it? Do you feel any responsibility <laughs> that so many people now play chess because of you? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think responsibility is the right word, uh, right word to use. I think, I mean, I'm very proud of the fact that so many people got, have gotten into chess, but actually the one thing I will say is that uh, for me, when I'm playing a competition like this, I feel uh, much more energetic. I feel I feel much more motivated because of all the people who, who follow me uh, on Twitch and on YouTube. So, uh, I mean, responsibility isn't the right word, but certainly all these people getting into the game has been great. And I think also, uh, like here in Poland, especially to see these people like um, Pakleza, uh, Bartosz, uh, and, and several other streamers, uh, the fact that they've gotten so much chess is also really, really amazing. So it's sort of cross many different countries, different languages, and different cultures, so it's been great everywhere. And do you feel any changes in your life, <laughs> let's say, because of that? I mean, I, I think uh, for me, I, I don't really, I mean, I, I don't think it's much different. Perhaps the only question is, can I play classical? I, I don't think in my mind I've ever thought that Rapid and Blitz is all that different. And there are a lot of people who seem to think that online tournaments are not the same as over the board. But, but what I would say to that is that when you look at the players who finish at the top, uh, of course, primarily it tends to be Magnus. But then you see players like myself, players like Wesley So, uh, players like Jan. I mean, these are not people who, who don't perform uh, over the board. So to me, that's not, never really been in doubt. And, but we'll see you know, when I play the Grand Prix whether it translates to classical, because that is uh, certainly a bit slower. Yeah, I've got a question about online chess because you, you were talking about this. Uh, as for you, what are the differences between online and over the board chess? I think uh, perhaps the biggest difference is that a lot of players over the board they can be, they can be very quick. I think a great example is uh, Fedoseev in this last game. He was very quick. I think if we had played this game online, I, I mean maybe he wouldn't have, uh, have lost some time, but he would have he would have been under a lot of pressure much sooner. I think also. Uh, my game against Alexenko, same same kind of thing. So I think online is actually probably harder because the, the way players view the board is a little bit different and it's it's, uh, it's harder kind of the, the hand eye is different as opposed to like physically moving a piece and then clicking and clicking it and so I think I think online is online is harder. So if you if you're faster, which I which I definitely am, I mean I think the advantage is more more pronounced. So I think I'm actually better online. Thank you very much. Yeah. And what question please? Uh, are you going to play uh, classical chess again? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm playing Grand Prix, so <laughs> obviously I will be playing classical chess. I mean, how much I play uh, remains to be seen, but I, I will be playing that for starters. Uh, but, you know, the one thing I would say is, uh, of course, I did play St. Louis Rapid and Blitz event back in August, I think it was, and I, I won that event almost too smoothly. And I think when I look at some of the other people who have not played as many tournaments, uh, I, I guess one one player stands out particularly, which is which is Vishy Anand, where he, I think it was in Croatia, I think, I think one of the Grand Chester events, he finished clear second, very smooth, great result, and then he played this event in Azerbaijan, I think goes so well. And uh, I was kind of worried that might happen to me here, but the fact that I've, that I've been playing so well, uh, I think it shows that, that I'm, I mean, I'm playing as well as ever. Has this break done anything to you, not playing classical chess? Um, I, I don't think so. I think if, if anything, though, the, the one big difference is there's so many fans online, um, and that actually, that, that gives me much more motivation than I had before. And I think uh, uh, when, when you see that, whether it's online or e even here, for example, this is quite quite unique here, here in Warsaw, where you have a lot of fans coming every day to watch. Uh, it, when you have that atmosphere, it feels much more like a sport um, than when you only have uh, you know, a handful of players or a handful of spectators at some events. Uh, I also wonder about the dress code uh, in this tournament. Uh, have you seen the tweet from uh, Vasily Alagrao earlier today? 
Yeah, I mean, okay, that's a, that's a bit controversial. I think I think what I would say in, in general terms, though, is that if I think about it not as like not as a chess player, but just as a fan, I mean, uh, you, you want you want to see the games. If if Maxime shows up in a tank top and and uh, and, and flip flops, I don't really care because I because I want to see see his games at Nigel for Bernfeld. So I don't I don't <laughs> think it's it's such a big deal. I mean, there should be some professionalism, but I think at times maybe it's too much. But okay, I mean, that's that's for others to decide. Are you comfortable comfortable playing in a suit? Um. Yeah. I mean, I have to say that it's it's kind of weird for me because I didn't wear a suit for two years. I mean, probably the last two years. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I wore shorts and, and actually like sandals most of the time, so uh, it's, it's it's a little bit different. But I mean, it's not it's not like something I haven't done before. Just sort of you, you kind of get back into it, you get used to it, and um, and so yeah, it's it's just something you do it a lot. I mean, you, you might forget for a while, but you never completely forget. Thank you. How does it feel actually to be in this tournament? Is it like vocation from streaming or the other way around? <laughs> or preparation for Grand Prix. <laughs> I mean, I definitely <laughs> not preparation for the Grand Prix. I, th I think what I would say is that, um, I mean, for me, really, the the result and whether I'm in it towards the end dictates whether it's sort of vacation, whether I view it as like vacation or work. And I think um, the fact that I'm in it, I, th I think like if you look, for example, say I'm playing the Blitz, if the first day, first day goes like just okay or something, and I'm not really in it on the second day, I, I won't probably feel so good about it. I'll think about it. Um, I'll think about it as like sort of some kind of vacation um, and Rapid is the same way. The fact that like at least in Rapid I'm going to the final day with a chance to possibly win um, makes it makes it a lot more fun. It feels feels I mean a bit less uh, less like a uh, like vacation more like some, some more because because again I mean having not played for two years you sort of you get that feeling again of being in the competitive spirit um, and I mean of course online tournaments are fun but there's nothing that really can substitute an event like a world, world Rapid but Question. Uh, yes, for the last two years uh, you've pursued your streamer career and I wonder to whether you enjoyed the uh, path of a streamer more than the path of professional chess player. I mean, I think uh, that, that, that really depends. I think that when I started streaming, uh, I was sort of doing it as a casual hobby. Uh, obviously, I was still playing a lot of professional tournaments. It wasn't, wasn't what, what it became during the pandemic. But I think the main thing is when there's so many, so many people getting into it, so many fans of the game, you really start to feel like it's more than just, just showing up and working. And I think that, that really makes it different. I think for, for a lot of the players, that's the case. I mean, Magnus certainly, I think like Duda as well. I mean, having, having a lot of Polish fans who I don't think uh, were following chess maybe even two years ago, it's, it, it makes a big difference. And so, you know, I, I like both of them, but the, the interaction, having so many fans that, that uh, you know, kind of overrides everything else. So at the moment, I mean, I would say that I kind of prefer streaming. And you mentioned Polish fans, you've encountered uh, quite a lot of Polish fans through Bartoszos or Pakleza. What, what do you think about Polish chess community? I mean, I think, I think it's great. You know, I think uh, there, was a, there was a time maybe, I mean, I'm sure Bartosz can, can talk about this, but there, there was a time maybe four months ago, I think, when he had kind of stopped streaming and taken a break. And, and I mean, I was just talking to him online for a little bit, trying to convince him to get back into it. And I mean, to see, see him back into it, to see the, the World Rapid and Blitz here in, in Warsaw, it's, it's really great. And the, the, whole, um, the whole Polish community, they, they, they've been amazing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just it's great. Okay, and uh, a question about what, uh, in your, one of your pre previous streams, you said that uh, the spot in the Grand Prix should have uh, take uh, that Andrei Yesipenko should have taken your spot. Can you explain more about it? Well, I mean, I, I think I, I think what I would say is uh, I, I, I sort of think the regulations probably should have been a little bit different. I think um, they probably FIDE should have frozen the activity requirements and just, just gotten rid of it for, for this brief window in time until things get back to normal and then we wouldn't be in this situation. But again, I would say that my results, at least in, in the rapid so far, definitely proves that I not, not any worse than I was before, uh, so I, I mean I think I'm I'm quite deserving of the spot, and I think you know also as far as Daniel goes, I mean I think he's he's played some fantastic games. Uh, he's, he's had some amazing um, amazing wins throughout his career, and uh, I think I, I I I don't see any reason that Andres Pack was more deserving than either of us. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Let's say the last one. <laughs> I'm sure most of the fans would want to see Carson versus Nakamura in the Virtus Championship. So, what do you think about your 
chance in Grand Prix first than candidates. Okay, so you're, you're talking classical because I think I mean there's yeah. a there's a very good chance I will play Magnus here. I think in the rapid. Um, I don't know, almost certainly in Blitz as well. I, I think um, hard to tell. I mean, again, playing this tournament in St. Louis, which was which was pretty smooth, and playing here where things seem to be going my way as well. Um, you know, I. I think that the fact that I'm not getting tricked into openings or I'm not getting into a lot of trouble shows that even if maybe I haven't worked as hard as other players, I'm still playing at a very high level. And I think uh, I think we'll see. We'll see what happens. But if either St. Louis or this this event are any indication, the fact that I've been very solid and I haven't been losing games is, is a good sign for the Grand Prix. Because I, I do believe, unless I'm mistaken, it's a knockout format. and. I've always thought that's that's well suited, but traditionally I've actually done very very poorly in, in knockout events. So again, we'll see. But I, I feel I feel pretty optimistic, and uh, I mean again for me there's really no downside, which which also I think makes a big difference when when there's only upside and there's no downside. Uh, um, it's it's very easy to play. It's very easy to play chess. It feels like this is a martial game that gone wrong. Yeah, and there you go. Hikaru goes for it. I'm curious to see what Hikaru face was you know he makes all faces and stuff yeah very very graphic player in a way so i'm sure right making exactly that face or like making a a a, a, a uh man that that stinks face bro this is garbage yeah. face at the board literally literally <laughs> he will do it bro Karo no, played h3 but doesn't that allow bishop takes d3 mine did not refresh there it is okay h3 queen f5 queen f5 is on the board Queen of five just yeah. happened. Okay, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know what times are. Uh... Okay, now it's a minute. So apparently, Predke has him fifty nine seconds now. Right, but then how much time does Hikaru have? I mean, that's it's... a good question, actually, Chad. Yeah, and I'd assume that rook g okay. five is a move here, hitting the queen. So it's a queen of six. I guess you have bishop e. If a bishop e five, there's still queen c six. But there should be something here, which is... You can get away with that, can't you? Queen c6, wow. But I still think this no, is the move, because you that. don't have a... What can you set? But then I can play knight a5, though. Queen b7, take on e4, no, b1's hanging. I think I was trying to get this knight out and play b3 quickly, but this, this is too much. Maybe my knight's on a5. Aha, uh -huh, but maybe this queen sacrifice is extremely annoying to deal with. Because your rook is under attack, and if you move it somewhere, yeah. then black's going to go rook e2. Ooh, and now take your pawn on b2. And I would think in a rapid game, this is very annoying to deal with. Hikaru goes knight to c1, but now the rook on b1 is blocked in. Something like c5, I don't know. Don't like this move. We are up a pawn. We are but up still a up pawn. A pawn. We can hold. We doing and good. They are. They seem to be in a time scramble, which is where Hikaru really excels. Yeah. Yeah, he excels, guys, and this is over to board two as well. Yeah. Not sure how much OTB, bullets and bullet, Predke has been playing. We're about to see right now. And Predke goes knight to b6, ready to hop in c4 or d5. Let's see what Icar will do here. Maybe someone like take a knight d3. The knight on d3 will hold everything, will defend the bishop, cover e1, defend b2 always. So I think that would be a nice uh, sequence here. But I can't. I thought Icar was way up on the clock. It'd be a little bit concerning if he's also that low on the clock. Let's try to find out. Yeah, yeah. It does feel um if I think he's able to hold though. I think he feel he's doing well rookie two shoot. And rookie one. I mean he's holding on by a hair, which is good. It's still holding on. Mike definitely got some comp here. It's like Bishop eight six, rookie two is there, knight d five uh -huh. in some cases, knight c four. It feels like we like just holding on to this pawn. Yeah, and in fact, he did play rook to g5, queen to d7. A trade happened on e4 and knight to d3. Queen e6 was played by black, but wait, knight c5, knight rook rookie one. two. Oh, rookie one, oh. yeah, just rookie one. Takes takes. Yeah, he's two. And the question is, what a6 do you six do? hanging. Oh, but there's bishop h6. That's getting murky. Yeah, Pretty black weird. has some tactics to watch out for. I guess you don't want to play b3 because then c3 becomes soft. Maybe just he goes queen to d1. I don't know. Queen d1, really. But okay, queen a2. How is that not a free pawn? Queen takes a2 is on the board. 
Oh, he did. Update a little slow for me. Oh, yeah, he board takes is a two. bit laggy. He got the pawn back. Oh, shoot. He got the pawn back. Okay. Dang. Shoot. Okay, Rook A1, take on A6. I guess you go all the way back. <coughs> yeah, oh, bless you. Thank you. Rook A1 and Rook A6. Or Queen C4. Let's I guess no, Rook, Rook C5 A1 is played. a nice move, no? Queen Throwing C4. that in. Oh, yeah, yeah, just throw it in there. Why not? Enough. And then after here, you take... And once again, this knight on d3 holds the entire position. It defends the bishop, it covers this. And the knight on d3 can never be dislodged. Like, you're suddenly ramping up... I guess bishop g3. But why? Missed. What happened, chat? Did he move already? Hey, Carl blundered. Oh, shoot. Bishop g3. What is this? Why not rook c5? What, did he, what was he thinking of? Bishop h6, but then he had, I don't know. And maybe it maybe it's a time blunder. Board. I mean, because he he's he has no time. Like guys, he LTB he got no time. Playing a strong GM here. Knight e5 is on the board. Knight e5. We see play takes three. rook takes. Mm -hmm. It should be around even, but both players are getting very low on the clock. Like 20 seconds for Ikaru. Predka has like a little bit more than 10. Okay, we. S oh yeah, mine uh, lagging a little bit. We had a few moves. Mine like just jumped of ahead. Ninety five rook takes. Bishop takes. f six and bishop g three. Tough to value with, with what's going on, but Black's king is always going to be, you know, a, bit, a little bit open. B four by Predka trying to open up on the queen side. And defending a six at the same time. Let's see what car will do here. Now. Okay, it's like, man, it's rough over here. There's the update, B4. Ah, what do and you do? Queen A4? I don't know. Queen A4, Queen A2, Queen A2. maybe Queen A2 to try to go C4. But I don't know, man. Let's, let's, let's hope it's a dub, because this is a hard dub to make. This, this is, is not an easy tough one. to defend. This is tough to defend. Pre like, Hikaru also has around a minute now. Predka has... Like 20 seconds, and Ikaru is keeping up the pressure. Bishop c5, now he's ready to go here. I would go h5. So, if in case of check, you can go here and your pawn is not hanging. But okay. Maybe rook d6 is very annoying to deal with, because after this check, you cannot go up. Because you lose the rook. Because mm, rook d7, I was trying to get that to work too. And Predka does play h5. H5 is on the board there. Yeah, shoot. He defended this boy well against Ikaru. I mean, he defended this thing very well. But Ikaru is going to press it. Just keep making moves. Yeah. Just keep making moves. Keep that energy coming, Chad. Just keep making moves. We up a pawn. This is a grind. It's a Magnus type game. You just grind exactly. it. Exactly. You're just going to grind this boy out. Go ahead. Keep making moves. It's hard to lose this. It's right. Very hard to lose this. So we just about to grind this boy out. Okay, do I have any moves? Nothing for me. Let me refresh. It feels like everything just stopped. In the meantime, Badur oh, Jababa yeah. is everything up did a just pawn stop. against... Wow. Badur is up a pawn against Magnus. I mean, he can never lose, but the question is, can he ever win? G3 by Hikaru on the board. Yeah, there's a crash on my end. Um, so do not refresh. Yeah. Um... Yeah, G3 is the position on the board. Let's see, I can just watch the stream till they come back. <laughs> it can't move it so fast, the system can't keep tra track of it. You're right, Mark. That's exactly what it is. And after G3, a couple moves happened. Rook E2, King G2, Rook C2, King F3, and F5. Okay, what should Ikaru do here to try to create winning chances? If Black gets a couple moves, maybe he does this and this. Check here. 
There we go. Can I get some games? Oh, and rook g7. Nice move. If king f6. Aha, he wants to go here. And where do you go with the knight? But this looks nasty. Because guess nice. what? You have to go knight c3. That's the I only move. To. If you give a check, your knight is all of a sudden trapped. In the That's middle true. of the board. When do you ever see this? Like oh, everything is covered. Oh, and that's actually on the board. He did play knight to c3. Tricky though. Knight's coming to e4. This is zero. But there is oh, something there like... Is. Can Hikaru pull off a win here? This is going to be very important for him in the tournament. What do I do now? I don't have time. Oh man, I got to move. Shoot. Gotta go, dude. Gotta coming. go. Well, you can go rook c7. With the threat of bishop you win. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. We have a couple more moves. d5 was played. King e5 and d6. That's pawns 90... must be pushed. Wait, 94, rook e7. There you lose. Okay, wait. I uh, lose. Every... Oh, 90... oh, 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 wait. 94 happened. is losing, right? Wait, but he played bishop e3, but rook e7? Wait, rookie seven, how's it? Wait, what? And mine hasn't updated. Instead, he played bishop to e3, king e6, e6 and rook g7. Dang okay, no, that's still very unpleasant Jeez. for black. Rook I'd assume e6. you have to take, take and king e5. D7 White okay. goes here, and I think he's gonna be up two pawns. But let's see what's gonna happen. I think. He has good chance. He has very good winning chances here, and that is actually what happened. King five, rook h six is on the board. He's gonna be up two pawns here. This should be a win for Hikaru. Can he pull it off? Live position is rook on h six. Oh, there it is. It updated. Yeah. Man, I was like six moves behind. All right, so rook h six. Oh, cool. It's a dub, chat. It's a dub. That's right. Well, it, um, hey, in a rapid chance with only in ten second increment, it's never over until it's over. Um, but yeah, he should be winning this one. All the chat spammers, that's because of you. He felt that energy. He takes mm -hmm. it in, he absorbs it, and he uses it. That's because of you, chat. three, I think he can just take this pawn. And knight of six, yeah. All right, rook h8 looks like the way to go here. Black does not have enough. But still, you know, you do have to push these pawns forward, which is not that easy. You know, the knight and the pawn are still, you know, sort of stopping you from doing that. Each but this should running. be a win. Yeah, this should be a dub. We're going to call this a dub. Dub City, thank you very much. I appreciate the yeah. generosity. That is a dub from our guy. We have He's going to win this one flawlessly. And Rook D8. Um, yeah, I'd assume that, let's say, if Black moves the Rook, you just start pushing here at some point. Oh, there's always knight of six. Yeah, we're gonna push those. H4, H5, you said there's always knight of six. You just right, push those, right? Six H5, happens. and if, push. Uh, oh. Knight of six, happens. maybe king of four, just push up the board. Oh yeah, yeah, king of four, king g5. Although you do have to deal with this, and I don't know if you wanna deal with that in a, oh, you can take. Yeah, and push, but or king of four, Once again, knights are three. tricky in a time scramble. Time takes, yeah, okay. <laughs> that was nice, right? Yeah, you never know sometimes. Uh huh. E car play rook to a8, knight, is, knight h5. Check rook h6. Maybe just check. What if black goes up? Do we go g4? Uh, it's he goes game. rook a5. He's gonna make the best move, so. Play rook a5. Saying your move. Yeah. I guess you just G4? wait with rook b3. Uh, G4 it's nice. separates the pawns. I'm not a fan. True, true. It's taking time. I don't, what's the, what, this is like some Zug master. Some Zug's wrong. G2. Okay, this some, is a threat now. If he gets in G4, he wins the game. So black has to move. Yeah, King G2. But if you move the knight back, G4. there's this. Right. Which right. is what yeah, happened. Is better. Yeah, bishop d4. Okay. Is. He's we hitting the him. knight. If he can if, if he can trade off the bishop for the knight, this is gonna be a clear win. Clean. Also rookie five is a or a clear yeah, both. <laughs> oh, knight e4 and rookie five. He wins another pawn. Guys, this one is in the back. Let's go. This one's over. If you go Let's here, go. you lose your knight. Let's if you go, go here, 
we take. There we go. Let's go. There we go. You Nobody guys kept sure. spamming that flower, and Hikaru Let's wins. Go. He moves to four and a half out of six, getting closer to the leaders. A very, very important win. H4. But, yeah, yeah, H4. but Anton is taking his time here. I mean, the position is quite complicated, but 11 minutes versus seven, that's okay, B6. That is probably the, the right move. Uh, making sure knight c5 can ever happen. But, you know, that, that can be a factor uh, later on. I'm definitely loving this position um, for white here. I think one number one, the creativity. Uh, number two, being a rapid game. Uh, number three, this is weird. It's very weird. Strange territory. Hikaru definitely thrives in these type of positions like this. Tactics right, yeah. can flow. And at a moment's notice, in two moves, three moves, in fact, I get g4, a knight on f4, and a bishop on d3. Which black yeah. didn't really make any progress. B six? No, nah, that can't be right. Right, Bob? Yeah, no, I think I think what Black's idea is like, let's say we go G4. I think he wants to take an F4 and go Queen D6, for example. And now if you're not careful with White and you play move like Bishop D3, guess what? There's Knight X D4. And if you Jeez. recapture, now this pawn is no longer defending the knight and your entire position collapses. So Hikaru would have to spend a move on something like Queen B2. So in case Anton takes, he can recapture with the queen. So what about knight uh, b2? Because the knight's gross on a4 now. Right, yeah, you, you make a good point there, yeah. If you go queen b2, the knight on a4, you have to be careful that it doesn't, you know, get stuck there. But it should always be able to swing back to the c3 square. So I, li I like bishop d3. I think it is a drastic measure, but I think a measure that had to be taken. Let's chop that way off. h5, yeah. rook h1. Can we get in there? question is are we able to make a play f5 oh very committal bishop's terrible yeah. g5 on instinct don't even think about the next move but, but you have is, uh, but you crazy. kind of have to play g5 right i mean your pawn's under attack and now there's only knight at g6 and this gets very scary but you would have to take here comes check because if you recapture white's happy white goes f4 closes everything on the king side uh, but black gives a check. Oh wait. Uh, black gives a check. We have to back up with the king. And now if black wants, black can make a draw. At the very, f at the very least, you know. Mm, but maybe it out. Black can, can I, play. Can I, can I zigzag? I can't. So you telling me I cannot run around? Well, yeah, that feels mm -hmm. too risky because black keeps on taking the stuff with check, check. But I go king b one, right? But I just take the knight. Oh, you're picking up the pawns too. And you yeah. have the knight, correct. I told you guys. Already saw this coming 10 moves before. Yeah. Check, you move on. Uh, yeah. Cool. So it would have won a few dollars there. Luckily, you didn't bet a house. You would have won a house, but you also would have lost the house. Yeah. If he did not go for it. Exactly. So save that energy for the, for the, for the next game. Check, king of two. And queen h2 is already a three-time repetition. All right, I see. I I do. I do see you guys. I do see you guys. Don't worry. We see. Also, do make chat. sure to interact with the chat. We see you at all times. Did he cover blunder? No, he did not. But this game is going to end in a draw. Queen h2, which is the only move for black, is a three-fold repetition. Yes. Russia, right, representing, but at the same time, um, Hikaru is very solid in every game that he's been playing. Also, this is a Roy Lopez that he's very familiar with. He's been down these lines before, um, but also something's just been thrown at him. Carrillo just threw C4 out here. I've never seen C4 in the Roy Lopez like this before. Have you ever seen this C4 move? All right, so we're going to look right, at it, of course, from the black perspective. So yeah, c4, it is a move because white is trying to clamp down on the center. Usually knight c3, so the white does next and d4. So I think this opening from Hikaru, like usually he plays the Berlin, given mm -hmm. the fact that he plays the sort of uh, delayed Steinich compare, um, um, like together with the move g6, it sort of shows that maybe he's already willing to take a bit more risk. And we see Kirill here going d4. But this opening can be tough to deal with with black because you can easily end up in a position which is a little bit passive. Right? Usually, I think you have to take and maybe you can keep the tension when a move like bishop, bishop g7, Hikaru decides to take. Yeah, it feels like he's just coming right at Hikaru here. But after taking on d4, I do like this. feels like 
you know, Hikaru's very, very good with the Bishop on G7, from Kings Indians, yeah. from Moderns, from thousands of games, actually, of playing the modern defense every day, every title Tuesday, every week, right? Yeah. All the time. He has a lot of positions with the Bishop on G7. So after taking on D4, probably placing the Bishop on G7, and et cetera, he's gonna have a very comfortable comfortable game here with the weird Moroxy buying type feel to this mm -hmm. Roy Lopez here, with the buying yeah, on the same sure. E4 and C4. I think a move here, which looks very natural to me, is something like Queen E2, followed by Rook 81. And then it will be on Hikaru to uh, create counterplay, because he has slightly less space. So let's see what he's going to come up with. You know, I also like the move H3 from um, from White as well. He played Rook C1, one more Maroxy mm -hmm. Bind style here. Yeah. He played Elite Maroxy Bind. <laughs> Maybe F5 here for Hikaru. I think that's really his only source of counterplay. But I love the F5 move. If White takes, how do we recapture? Because if you take it at night, I'm a bit worried that white maybe can take and after it takes there's check I'm taking with a pawn and these seven drops oh, man, that's a good question how do we take this knight or rook i mean knight or pawn knight takes right. i mean we could take it with the pawn. pawn i'm gonna take with the pawn bro i'm gonna just make it very dynamic king h8 rook g8 and maybe just hit that side of the board yeah play very dynamic i'm also threatening f4 immediately too so yeah but it does feel like after gf uh, it does weaken Black's pawns a little bit and it's king. Maybe white can go queen e2, bishop h6 to trade off this defender so the king will feel a bit more uh, uncomfortable. But let's see what's going to happen. Hikaru is thinking after the move rook c1. He could also prepare with rook a8. But the thing is, like, if you make a lot of uh, pre preparatory moves, you know, preparation moves, Mm -hmm. then your opponent also can anticipate right for the f5 break so then at some point the moment is gone so to speak yes correct correct and then actually uh, i think with good calculation here you still can play f5 yeah. luckily here any f4 push is always hit with my g4 followed by f5 in mean, king's indian yeah. fashion and then um yeah yeah f3 i can still play f5 h3 i can play f5 there's nothing you can do really to stop me from playing f5 besides uh in f4 which would be a, technically a blunder. There is H3, there it is. Yeah, H3 F5 on the board. steal. Yeah, now F5, I think you kind of, I mean, you don't have to, but you really want to do something, right? Now, once again, yeah. C6 would be a huge blunder because white is a four and this knight has nowhere to go. All the squares are uh, taken away. It's G4 square as well. So that cannot be played, but I do expect the card to play F5. And I don't see what Kirill, like, okay, let's say Kirill takes. We're going to recapture if white takes. Let's see, we take white can give a check, but I guess we move over and if takes maybe some knight d3 business. Hitting the rook, hitting the knight, that should work yeah, out. Yeah. So I think okay, rook d1. Go oh yeah, yeah, obviously rook this would take. So rook c2 is the only move. Right, but then knight something c5. like knight c5 because should win. Order of yeah. this. Rook takes c3 wins on the spot. Oh, oh rook takes c3, nasty, yeah, yeah. nasty. Takes C3, and I take C5 winning, everything winning. Very nice. There's a lot so, of possibilities here. So F5 is being a very big shot here for Ikaru. What What is any other options you could be thinking about here besides F5? I can't Maybe not, think of definitely not C5. There it is. And when Ikaru has moved, F5. F5 is on the board. Yep, that's our man. He's going for it. Um, now, the problem for White is that, okay, White, Black puts pressure on the pawn on E4. But more importantly, if black gets a move here, right, like, let's say white plays rookie one. I think Hikaru's main idea is to go f4 and hit the bishop. If the bishop moves back, there's actually knight at d3. Hitting this rook on c1, hitting the rook on e1, and hitting the knight on d4. Beautiful. Beautiful. I also like f3 there as well. Yeah, and there's also f3. f3 is also crushing, yeah. So white cannot allow to push f4. White could maybe play f3. But I guess then Hikaru just continues positionally with someone F4 like f4, bishop f2, now this knight on e5 is completely solidified. And then maybe he can now go c6 and b5. That'd be a nice idea. Very nice. And, Very nice. Yeah. And you said this earlier, Hikaru thrives in these kind of King's Indian type of position. So Absolutely. I did a chess.com video, right, for the YouTube channel for chess.com's YouTube. Right, of, of Hikaru's top five King's Indian games. This is very, uh -huh. very King's Indian-like. So this yeah. could get very, very scary for Kirill here. 
because Hikaru is in his element here. I mean, he knows these positions in, inside and out. And he plays the modern a lot, so a lot mm -hmm. of Bishop G7 time here. Yeah, no, for sure. So, yeah, maybe what... Okay, he does take an F5, now Hikaru should take with the knight. Because you don't really want to take with the pawn that weakens your position, but I think... I mean, maybe Kirill underestimated that Hikaru can just take with the queen and he has all these tricks with knight of d3. Yeah. This looks completely fine for Hikaru. The question is, though, can he create any sort of real Play. winning chances? Right. Yeah, because without, the the, without the tricks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking the same thing. That's why I was taking with the pawn because I don't see the, Im the imbalance there is kind of like forever. So, right. like, we at least have something to do the rest of the game. Yeah. But here, I mean, this is Hikaru has been playing like this the entire time, very solid. So this could be a very appealing position to him. Now to c5, and Hikaru took with the pawn. Let's hope Kirill, like knight g1 is a very, very strong defensive move. So let's let's hope Kirill will not find it. If he finds it, he has a very good chance to hang on. Okay, wait, wait, let's try this then. Knight g1, rook takes f2, bishop d4. Is there anything there? King of one. Oh, but he just uh, rook f check and knight f3. Yeah, there's always knight f3. This knight on f3, rook. it really holds the entire king. Dude, that knight on f3. I'm trying to make everything to work. This should be four. This should be e3 draw. Jeez, just that knight f3 is a monstrous monstrosity yeah. of a move. My goodness. Karpov there. Karpov has done that many times. Indeed. Yeah, because the knight will find stability on f3. It will block off the f file. Because uh, also right now the knight is kind of loose. If black gets another move, a move like queen h4 could be nasty yeah, to deal with. Oh, and he played knight g1. Rough. Oh man! All right, we out of here. Yep, this is Drowski. We gonna buckle up, guys. I don't know what's about to happen here. Knight g1. Kareel is pushing tight. This is some very very strong defense. What g5? Defense. But why can try to start trading off with rook e1? Maybe rook f4. Rook f4 is a move. Piling up on the F file like that. Yeah, just double on the file with a smile. G5, yeah. G4. And then you're just going to get... sack. Oh, yeah. Probably just sack it and put the bishop on D4. Yeah. He played G5 first. Do you think we're moving G... the queen at all and playing H5? G4 Wait, or play are we going to play G4? Yeah, he played G5. Okay, but now rookie one is annoying. So can you don't play knight of three because of g4 and you blast open the king's side? Right. But rookie one looks tough to deal with. Okay, did take with the pawn. Um, well, maybe what, maybe what we have to hope for is that somehow Kirill overpresses, like maybe doesn't want the, a repetition, because knight 2 is a very clear repetition. We have to go back. Oh, knight he three and we have to defend. Too. And he went back rookie eight, yeah. Yeah, and he's gonna do the same thing. Rookie eight, knight f3, rookie four. Is that happening? Oh, um, Satch. Yeah, you, tough. I, yeah, he defended really like literally, think... this was like, I have to see the accuracy here. I'm very curious. This man, a career play, this was brilliant uh, defense, defense here. He had everything he had about it, just yeah. about everything. Yeah, and no, from some mom moment onwards, he really found the best moves and, and uh, hung in there. I, I think he's just gonna make the draw here. There's nothing really white can do. He is yeah. up in this round against Vladimir Fedoseev, also known as Big Fish. Um, what do you make of this pairing? Uh, you know, that's a strong pairing. That's a big boy pairing from some big fellas. Yeah. They, they've been swinging at it and slugging it out before. We've seen them play. Uh, that's Big Fish from um, Chess.com. He's in a 3K club. You know about him, Bach. You know it. So yeah, yeah. You know, tell, tell the chat a little bit about, you know, this matchup here, what we got going on. Yeah, no, Big Fish, uh, Vladimir Fedosev is, ex is extremely strong, especially like also in the faster time formats. Hikaru and uh, Fedosev did play last year in the Speed Chess Championship in which Hikaru almost adopted him. He went 9-0, but then failed to win the very last game. Um, but still, yeah, he is very strong in the faster time control. So let's see how Hikaru will fare against him today. And we have a Queen C2 Nimzo with D5. C takes d5 on the board. I think Ferrosev is going to take with a pawn here. It's a variation that's generally uh, quite playable for black pieces. And it's a bit of a risky opening choice here for black. Because, okay, momentarily he's down a pawn. He has a lead in development. But if you don't prove it, then um, once again, you will be down a pawn for insufficient compensation. A trick often here to keep in mind is that after e3 and black goes d4, now all of a sudden white goes queenside castles. 
and your pin all over the place and you could easily end up losing another pawn. So it's up to big fish to really Not prove the compensation the here. Kingside is a lot less attractive. Also, this pawn on d5 is weak. So that's sort of the, the tricky thing about this opening. Right, Black's pushing forward, but if he doesn't have a way to follow it up, then his position can just be much worse. He can, yeah, can very crumble quickly, absolutely. As you mentioned, the d5 pawn is weak, and, and I'm not a fan of giving up the bishop here, but in that situation, it would be totally fine due to the weakness of d5. I still have a strong bishop as well. Yeah. Casting no more weaknesses in the position for white as the c5 pawn is gone. I'm feeling great, and this is just a, a smooth grind, running for two results. Yeah, no, 100%. So let's see what, what Big Fish will come up with. Yeah, he's a big fish. Do not play around. But yeah. he is uh he is uh, in trouble right now. Yeah. Slightly he has some problems to solve. Problems to solve. Yeah, Big Fish is thinking here. We see Queen E7 check. Oh, but King of One, this actually helps Hikaru. Because now he's ready to swing in the rook. Put that. pressure on the e files. Casting yeah. queen side can't happen in rook check. I mean, this is an easy position to literally just fall into, slide into, uh, yeah. not and making natural moves here. Queen f4 uh, attacks the f6 square and the d6 square. You can't yeah. really. Maybe you go rook c1 first, reverse the move order. What happens on rook c1 first? Right. Yeah, rook c1 makes a lot of sense. It stops it like seven. from castling. But I think maybe you go knight c6 to try to castle anyway. But then queen f4, there it is, rook c1. Then queen f4, he can't castle. Then we got the line. Oh. A6, knight f6. But then bishop c7. Wait, what? Oh, this is ridiculous. Move orders, yeah. So let's see what Big Fish is going to do here. It's getting below three minutes. Hikaru is still almost eight minutes on the clock. Um, The evil bar is showing equal, right? It's showing zeros, but... Once again, Black's king is always going to feel a little bit airy over here. Black has to be careful if he makes... He goes rook f to c8, but wait. He is a pawn grabber. He's going to take this. He's going to take on b7. You can you can bat your kids. He's going to take on b7. Uh, uh, okay, don't... don't, don't, don't I, I'm, I'm just... Y'all hear that chase at bet the kids. Bet your children. Okay, don't don't, don't actually do that. Skin realized. Someone Please is saying I bet my kids. No, don't do, don't do that. Please don't do that. But he's gonna take. He's gonna take. We're we about to see right now because some people out here really betting their kids because of you, Bach. Right now, children are getting. He's gonna take. Like, this is, this is, is there a bishop d5? No, you go rook b4. No, he's gonna take. 100%. 100%. Let's see. Let's see, guys. He said, Can I bet half a kid? Wow. Can I bet <laughs> half a kid in the chat? You're Nah, your kids will be safe. I mean, <laughs> I bet half a kid. Keeping his time advantage, five and a half minutes versus one. Rook AB8 by Big Fish. Yeah, and there's a nasty, there's a nasty move here. Rook. What you looking at? To C1. Oh, Rook C1. <laughs> Look, that's, because that's now cute. all the rooks rook make contact. If you take here, oh wait, there's I more tactics you. probably. Thank you. King G7. And now, if I could magically play Queen D4, I'd be winning. Because if you take, there's knight f5. But I don't think I can. If I go bishop f4, bishop e4, you go here, I guess. So you can rook capture e7. the rook. But there should be something nasty here. Like... Nothing yet. Oh, bishop, bishop c4 good. is nasty. Hitting the bishop. And if takes, takes, your knight is under attack. And if you move the knight, guess what? That's what we were talking about earlier. The king Spink. is permanently weak. Spinkers. Exactly. Hello, hi. Checkmate. Wow. <laughs> we have development. Bishop e6, so, b4s. Oh, and he's taken on b4. Yeah, rook c1 would have been a great move, but instead he has taken on b8 and gone b4, hitting the bishop. And now the bishop just moves back, and black finds more stability. Also, the b pawn is kind of weak. Can always go queen g5. So, don't love this continuation. Let's see if he can still try to trick him somehow that's a nice night on b3 yeah pretty good i mean let me see i don't have the eval bar on but is it uh i'm assuming it's sort of equalish maybe white's just winning because he got the mm -hmm. pawn but this and i mean this root this b4 pawn feels weak my knight's still on h4 maybe let me turn it oh, yeah i know what to say 
Yes, knight. Nicholas. Okay. So oh, he has wait, knight. Uh, bishop e6, rook one, knight b3 is on the board, but Hikaru has here to move. Rook takes e6, what? Looking at right now, rook takes e6? If you oh take the goodness. queen, there's queen f4, and you hit the and rook. counterplay. Oh my and goodness, you play rook takes four. e6. Wow. Right, like, let's say you go here, bishop I go bishop c4, c4 I hit your yep. queen, I hit your knight, that's game over. Why, right? If you go rook to c8, there's bishop f5. Once again, I hit and everything. Lie. Sheesh. Big and fella. If you is he going to play it yet? With the pawn, there's stuff. Oh, there's queen c2. You hit the knight, and if the knight moves, you go queen c7, hitting the rook, and then you threaten this and this. But it's very difficult to find. Wow, that's That'd be insane. insane. That is insane, dude. Just it's, it's not especially in a rapid game. Rook takes e6, yeah, but queen e says rook queen. Somebody said queen takes h4. You just take the queen and then take on h6. Right, Maybe black can do this. No, and. Right, White is days. better, but it's still very close to a draw. Right, right. Because he takes b4, we take h6. Well, unless we go take a7. Maybe we go take that pawn. Yeah, I mean, White is better, but uh... it feels like this should be a draw somehow. So mm -hmm. even if this is a move, White, he, Big Fish can probably figure out pretty quickly that he can go into this endgame with good drawing chances. I, I mean, so... yeah, that g pawn too, though. It's super yeah. weak, right? Can we just you know pull up on him, snap him, and push the boys? Push yeah. for more. Right, so once again, maybe Hikaru will just choose to keep the tension in the position with a move like Queen e3. Oh, it takes on e6. Wait, Rook takes e6, e6 on fe e6. is on the board. It's on the board. Queen oh c2. My goodness. Queen Real c2. Spam this flower to give wow. Hikaru power. He did it. Queen c2 is on the board. Hikaru is seeing on another level. Somebody check his, uh, four, his but seat. Here, check his chair for a wire. Wow. I think with only one minute on the clock, this is almost impossible for big fish to defend big fella Keep with a big spamming that move. flower oh my goodness he found it and he said big let's fish go is thinking here let's go take him to that side yeah big vlad is in some big trouble he has to go knight d4 right he cargo queen c7 and now let's think if let's say you take him b4 I give a check, you move the king over. Oh, and G6? we... Knight g6, they're no. still here, and there's not a checkmate yes. quite yet. But you go queen d7, well, you take away the square, oh, and then here. Oh, queen d7 first, and knight g6 would have moved queen d7 with a little quiet move. Oh, and wow. queen f7, queen d6. Damn. And then knight g6. Oh, then my knight g6. Wow, Bob. Wow. Wait, what happened here? Something's going on. Is it still going on? Rook takes b4s on the board, queen c8 oh, check. Okay, Wait, he should yeah. be winning he here. Queen c8, okay. King g7, knight g6 wins, because you cannot stop this. And queen f8. Wait, this one's game over. Hikaru has to find queen c8 and knight g6. That shouldn't be. And if you go queen f8, there's. You take on e6. Take here. If queen f7, bishop Block. eight, seven, knight f5. Um, but black. Well, there's. I can still wiggle his way out of it. Wait, no, we got more moves. King g7 is on King the board. Knight g6. Knight g6. That should be Hitting pretty spreading. findable. He oh, he gives King a check G7. first. Okay, but this is winning. If you block with the queen, queen c3. You have to go rook to d4. It. There it is. But it's not 100% over yet. There's oh, queen takes c2, rookie, probably queen takes c6. Yeah, he's still playing on rook d4. He should win this one. Mm -hmm. Like, take the queen d or is there any other move? Bishop g6 maybe is it in between? Hikaru should win this one. Rook d4 is forced, otherwise you lose too much material. He's gonna take the knight. Rook d4 is on the knight. board. He takes the knight. Of course, still three minutes on the clock. Big fish, 30 seconds. Bishop g6 uh, incoming maybe. There is an e5. Yeah. This king is still weak. Queen takes f2, Ooh, okay. Daring. Queen takes e6 is the move. Threatening knight f5 and queen g6. And if you take here, queen g6. Yeah, you just queen take, and if take, queen g6. g6. It should be easy money for for Ikaru. He just he got Big time. He's just gonna block him again. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's Queen takes e6 is on there the it board. Is. It's Queen takes e3. There might even be knight f5 and black is forced to give the queen. It might even and be a resi here. A hard resignation. There's no way this is a fortress, right? I mean, come on. Oh no. Nah. Oh, no. Nah. 100%. No. Absolutely no, no, no. not. 
So then this is probably the easiest way to win. And Big Fish is thinking, he probably realizes he is lost. 12 seconds. Is he gonna catch that? Big Fish, Rook takes Z3 is on the board. Both Queen Z6 and Knight of 5 are winning. Hikaru can really choose. I think Knight of 5 is the Knight easiest. Knight of 5 is like, yeah, Knight of 5 is the best, obviously. Yeah, that's mating. Yeah. That's, that's almost mating. But yeah, he says he goes the queen, like you said, and he's trying to figure out if this is Forger's asking that same question. I mean, 100% <laughs> he's like, Yo, is this a fortress? Like, Should I just go queen cheese it? I think black has chances of a fortress if he has, uh, you know, let's say this happens, right? Black has chances of a fortress in this position if the G-pawns would not exist. But with two G-pawns, there is literally no way. But Ikaru, he, is, he played queen g6. Okay. Now you gotta go this king route. f8, because if he goes here, he's gonna take here first, but Hikaru's gonna win this game 100%. King f8, you can take here first as well. I was about to say, you can still take h6, right? And just because if you go here, drop. then you give a check, you still pick up the rook. And pick up the rook anyway. Like if you go, yeah, he takes on h6, being precise till the end. This should be a win, Yeah. which Very would move nice. Hikaru to six and a half out of nine. Okay, Queen H7. Seven. Yeah, he's picking up the rook. Okay, just finishes Take one we'll off. Check. Queen C, King C5. Maybe bring the knight back into the game. Looks nice. But yeah, Black right. still has an A pawn. If that A pawn would not be on the board, Big Fish would resign, and then block Ikaru. But there's still some work to be done here. It's not 100% yeah, over annoying. just yet. Because there's still work to be done, right? And you're like, okay, yeah. I gotta, I gotta just you know breathe, take my time. Don't, don't mess this up. Yeah, knight of five on the board, I guess just a5, you gotta do something. Yep, they keep listening to me. Queen c3 maybe, looks nice. Queen c3, knight e3 too. Everything works. Queen d3 Knight e3, Queen nice e3. move as well. Uh, he yeah, should Queen be D6, finishing Queen this C3, one off. Knight e3. But it's not 100% over just yet because the king can be slightly exposed if you move this knight back to block the a-pawn and then black can suddenly give lots of checks so once yeah, again there's still C1. work to be done for hikaru c1 h6 diagonal will be very very tough to defend i think this is a nice move though because black has to defend this pawn once again if the pawn drops off it's game over and if he goes king b5 there's a check. I like this queen a3 move. He's, he, he has a knight, knight, e, knight, e, uh, knight d6 uh -huh. next to c4 and a5. But... I thought that's what he was going for. Maybe knight d6. Maybe not. Maybe just a little light check. Mm, but there's still like queen f6 and I start giving a lot of checks. It's not 100% over yet. Okay, don't throw, don't throw. Knight c4. Still has to close this one out. He should win this one, but it's not over yeah, just it's yet. It's annoying. It's annoying. It's work to do. Like, it's so annoying. Yeah. Knight a4. Knight c4. I, I really four. feel like he should have gone for that queen versus rook endgame. That felt like a 100% win. And here, you know, there's still, okay, knight d6. King c6 is on the board. So you have knight c4, and if queen f6, oh no. I thought we could go queen a4 check and then take on a5, but there's king c5. Like there's just yeah. all this extra stuff. And if you take black goes king b5, for example, and now things get a little bit tricky because your knight is on the rim and black is ready to give a lot of checks. We have more moves. He played knight e4 hitting the queen. Okay, queen has to go to... <laughs> Somewhere. D4 maybe? What if the queen goes here? Oh, you take here. And if take, Oh, queen D4, booyah. queen A5, and queen A8, yeah. <laughs> and Honestly. this is only one, uh, it's two checks, because if you give another check, I block knight F2, and this is over. Uh, so Big Fish probably has to go queen F5, which is what he plays. Okay, now check. King has to go to B5. Then what, how do we... Oh, you give a check, king c4 and queen f4. Take, take, here, 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 you queen, black queens, and guess what, oh, okay. you give a check. You get a skewer, another skewer. 
He chorus calculate nice. all of that. So he gets out of that check. Yeah, queen c3, king b6, queen d4, queen c6. Now, queen d6 should win. If you go back with the king, there should be something. Right, like what happens after king b5 there? Queen d3, well, check, king b5, king that, then, then that line with queen f4. Oh, yeah, 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 queen of four, right, okay, okay, checkmate right. here, queen of four takes and skewer. So he has to go back, king b7, is that mating, knight c5? It's not checkmating, but you can pick up the pawn with a check, which is also pretty good, like check, the king goes here, and you pay, pick up the pawn with check, and then you have time to stabilize. So he should be winning this one. And maybe he is calculating this line, with queen of four. He has 20 seconds. He just he makes king, king g1. g1. Wow. King, king g1. Ma makes sense though. Getting out of dodge. He's still controlling everything. And make it but make Karu, like only 20 move. seconds on the clock as well. Still has to close this one out. That's getting close. Queen f8. Is there an immediate win? Um. Maybe check. He's getting close. He's getting very close on time here. He needs to he make a move. He cannot trade the queens, I'd assume. He got a move, bro. Knight of wow, he two. made a move with nine seconds on the clock. Queen b4. Queen c5 played. Okay, now take. This okay. is still blocked, Ooh, but king b5. The knight is pinned. The knight is pinned. King, king, e2, king b4. It's not over just maybe king h2 so the knight can hop in again. Is that, oh, yeah, yeah, king h2 just sidestep. Yeah, I'm going. He goes king of one with the same one. idea, but now after check, you would have to pin yourself. Oh, I have queen e1 pawn. now, right? Can I just, can, am I able to play queen e1 and get around? Maybe I can't get around. I'm sure I can. I'm sure there has to be a knight jump that I'm able to it's, get that pawn. It's not over just yet. Yeah. King b3. Okay, now knight d3 is a nice move. Moving in the knight. Knight d3, queen f5, king g1. That's it. Queen d3 check was chosen by Karo. King b2. Okay, what do we. What do, uh, maybe knight d1, knight to c3. Looks nice. Right, queen d1 too. Oh, but that's. Uh, he has queen. He's just going to check you. Probably. Okay, knight d1. If knight king d1. c1, does queen e3 win on the spot? That should be winning, no? Take, take. Yeah, this wins on the spot. And then knight c4. You're completely yeah. blocked. So it feels like knight d1 on the board. Okay, king wait, but king a1. a1, two, or a1 yeah, king a1, king a1, I should be able to trade, right? If I can trade, it's game over. Yes, that does win. Maybe even queen c3. Too. King c1. Queen okay, idea. queen e3 wins on the spot. Take, take. And knight c4. He's gonna find knight c4. You go game, right? here, yeah, I definitely. push. You go here, I Same push. Idea. Oh, and I queen with check, but. That's not that easy to see there from afar. For the only 20 seconds to calculate. Queen E3, can he, he figure it out? Two after that? Oh. Other moves are winning as well, like 93, but this is the cleanest. It win Queen C3 oh, was chosen by Hikaru. It's a rat. He resigned. Hikaru resigned. resigned. Let's go, Chad. Get that energy. Get that energy. Let's go. That energy. Wait. Stop playing right now. Oh, That's right. This wins. Yeah. Yeah. Get hyped. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah, Let's scream. Go. Just stand up and scream. Wherever you are, just stand up and scream right now. 